Today we're going to talk about hairline design, not the tiny little hairline design, but the larger hairline design or hairline shape in context of ethnicity and race and also facial shape. I think when you're looking at a design for a hairline, you've got to consider many factors. Facial shape, the age of the patient, the degree of hair loss, the amount of donor density in the back, as well as ethnic differences. To cover all of those things in this short video is going to be a little bit overwhelming. I want to focus on a couple ideas. The first of which is looking at the way a hairline should be shaped based on ethnicity. A lot of times we talk about doing ethnic hair restoration that would be in a Middle Eastern, uh, African American, Hispanic, or Asian person, and we just think, oh, it's because of the caliber of the hair. We had some videos on regional hair transplantation in terms of the shape and caliber and curl of a hair. All of that is very, very important and won't be reiterated herein. What we're going to focus on instead is what does a hairline shape look like for different ethnicities. For a Caucasian, first of all, before we do that, let's talk about the two basic hairline shapes. There's either a rounded hairline shape or one that's slightly suppressed with a little bit of a tail that curves out to the edges. The shape that looks the best in most Caucasians, I would say about 95% of Caucasians out there, is a slightly suppressed shape of a hairline where there's a little bit of a taper and a, cur a curve outward. In a Caucasian, if you do a standard just round hairline, it can look like a, uh, like, what, like a cereal bowl edge. It looks very, very unnatural. So even if you soften the hairline, even if you create those micro finesse work that we talked about in, in making a hairline look good, it's not necessarily the best design in most Caucasians because most Caucasians that have a frontal temporal recession in this area don't look so good with this wider uh, um, sh uh, shaped hairline. Interestingly enough, the opposite is the case when you're looking for especially African Americans who have the straightest of all hairlines. If you look at uh, different actors, Jamie, Jamie Foxx, or you look at uh, different celebrities, they have a very straight hairline that comes down and is, is a better, sharper frame, almost like what a female uh, hairline would look like in terms of design. And again, we're focusing really today on, on male hairlines, not female hairlines. Um, the way that a African hairline is straighter and an, an Asian hairline is somewhere between the two. It's a little bit more suppressed, but there's less taper on the edges. And it looks more natural to frame, I, like so I have a wider face. The Asian face, it tends to be wider, looks a little bit better with less suppression on the edges. Otherwise, it looks like it's just this narrow uh, hairline jutting forward and it won't fit the face. So it, it does relate to facial shape, but also relates to ethnicity. So a slightly wider hairline with a little bit more suppression, a little less suppression would look good in certain ethnicities. Middle Eastern men, it all depends on, on exactly you know what the shape of the head is and uh, ver there's other variable factors. I would say in most Middle Eastern men I look more like a Caucasian hairline which is more suppression, a little bit less of a round shape that looks better for them. For Hispanics it's somewhere in between I would say a Middle Eastern and an Asian. Sometimes you have a wider face and I think the reason for this is just like when we're looking at the nose, what we call the mestizo nose which has elements of possibly some African uh, uh, heritage from the slave trade that went through the, the, the Caribbean to some of the indigenous oriental features or Asian features from the uh, Incans and Aztecs lived here as well as some of the conquistador Spaniards, the whites come over here. So that intermingling that occurs with the nose can also affect the, the, uh, the way that their facial features are going to look like and therefore there's more of a mix in terms of how I make a judgment when I'm designing a hairline for a Hispanic patient. Um, oftentimes if they have more sort of the Asian features or more of the indigenous features of North America or South America, the hairline will be slightly less suppressed. If they have more Caucasian features, it's going to be a little bit more suppressed, again de depending on facial features. The thing that you don't want is no matter what facial features it could be is this long column of hair going forward without much suppression. Um, the other thing that's very important, I'm just going to briefly touch upon it because it's nice to finish off the subject with this, is the idea of where the temp temple sits because as we're creating the shape of the hairline, we forget that the temple is very, very important. In, in uh, younger people, I'm less aggressive with the temple fills because I know they're going to have further recession. In more mature men, it's actually very, very important to think about some degree of temple fills if they're having significant loss because the facial uh, shape frame will not match. So the temple reconstruction sometimes can be almost as important as the frontal hairline reconstruction to create balance and blending. When I'm working with a younger uh, head, when I'm creating shape, the suppression 
compression at the lateral edge right here tends to be a little less acute. And the reason is that if I go too acute going this way, I almost force a temporal reconstruction in the future. And I'm, I'm planning for that little bit of recession. So the arc as it meets the hairline for the younger patient is slightly less acute. And as its suppression goes forward, it's, it's more uh, going backwards than going outwards. So that as the hairline recedes, I, I will have some time to rebuild and I'll have enough donor hair to consider rebuilding that area. So that's just a little side note. But that's the general idea of when I'm looking at a hairline shape, and again, a rounder shape, more for Asians, more for African Americans, African Americans even less, uh, less round, and then going further toward Caucasians with a little bit of suppression with Hispanics and Middle Eastern, somewhere lying between the two.